Good morning, lovers of the word. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, we're getting to the part of the prayer where Jesus is about to finish, and he's going to be sacrificed. He's going to be uh, taken, tortured, kept up all night, and crucified, and he's going to die. And so this teaching that he began um, all the way back in chapter 13, it comes to its culmination at this point in chapter 17. And here we find the final prayer of the Lord being given on behalf of his disciples before going up on Gethsemane and being taken by those who would come for him. So let's go ahead and begin. Father, I pray and ask that you bless this reading your word. Lord, grant us wisdom and knowledge. Live we upbraideth it not, but more so make us more endeared and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us with your Holy Spirit and help us to become more like you. Fashion us in thy image and prepare us by thy hand, because, Lord, you are coming to take us back. And I praise you for that. And I pray that you bless us with it. In Christ's name, amen. All right, turn, if you will, in your Bibles. Let me go ahead and read to you from John chapter 17. We're going to begin our reading at verse 20. Um, Jesus has prayed, and in our last study, we talked about how he wanted us sanctified. He says, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. This means he has given himself, set apart to be our sacrifice. Sanctification means set aside holy to be used by God the Father. That they also might be sanctified through thy truth. Now, what we have here is Jesus has set himself aside holy to be used by the Father, that we might be sanctified. And this is the words, this word that is used here, it's speaking of a process, that they might be sanctified through thy truth. And that is once again, and we discuss, discuss this word agiazo or hagiazo, however you want to pronounce it, because the H is silent, it's A-G-I-D-Z-O, agiazo. And it talks about a product that is being fashioned. It talks about something that is not thrown away, but actually is in the hand of the craftsman being used. And this is where Philippians 1.6 comes in, where he says, He that hath begun the good work in you, Agiazo, will continue it until the day you see Jesus, and you will be just like him at that point. Friends, that's what happens, and it's through thy truth. The Curian Aletheia, and this is talking about the word of God. It molds us more into the image of God. It fashions us. It speaks to our heart. It blesses us. Let no man judge you in meat, drink, or in reference to the holy day. You know, don't worry about the fashions and the rudiments of this world. Christ has died to them, and you've died to them also. Nehemiah 8.10, go and eat the fat of the land, drink the sweet, which was the wine that was freshly made. See, life is not to be endured. It is to be enjoyed beneath the hand of Jesus Christ. Friends, I, I, I had to turn off my Christian radio yesterday because I can only take so much about these pain songs, people talking about their pain and calling out to God. I, I can't stand this new contemporary Christian music anymore. Because, and, and I was talking to a Christian this morning. We were doing a Bible study together. And I said, I don't have that pain. I don't. I'm in pain right now as I sit. My whole body hurts, but I'm so filled with joy. I, I, every day is a good day. I look around me. I see the hand of God everywhere. I feel his presence. I know he has sealed me. He's chosen me. He's given me a place in his kingdom. Friends. Rather than listening to whiny butt songs from people who obviously don't have a good fellowship with Christ because they're continually writing these songs about pain and and it's because they're attached to the world. Right? You're going to walk with the world like I discussed. A pig will eat you. If you're a sheep, he'll drag you through the mud. He'll turn and eat you. Jesus set himself aside on our behalf. He became the fulfillment of all the promises of God and he has given us his word and his Holy Spirit so that we will be through the process of being sanctified I was talking to my dear friend Rob Congdon yesterday and 
and he asked me about my health and and I told him that it's a miracle I'm alive I don't have and I literally don't I'm not lying I have no arteries no veins and absolutely no capillaries on my heart the doctor was amazed in the hospital when I was in there a couple weeks ago because my heart they, they had it on the echogram they were showing it it was as smooth as a baby's butt or baby skin and he says you can't be alive I said I'm right here he says I don't understand it he says he says somehow your heart is getting oxygen but it's getting it without veins capillaries or arteries he says I don't know how you're alive I said I know they've told me that three times that I've had to come here I went because my blood pressure was like 215 to 230 over 139 my head felt like it was gonna explode so they got it down to where I can live with it between one I usually it runs between 160 and 180 I can deal with it. I, I can live good like this. Why? Because God keeps me alive. And Rob said, you know, Tom, God has got a, a job for you to do. Or he has, that's why he hasn't taken you home. There's still something for you here. I thank God. I want to know what it is, but I want to serve my life the best I can for my Savior. He's, he is the most important thing in my life. Do I sin? All the time. I was just pouring my heart out before this video. I don't know why God loves me so much. It's because he can't help but love. He is the, the effigy of love. He is the wellspring of all love. It flows from his throne. Friends, Jesus is asking us to be in the word and let the Holy Spirit teach us. Let's get in it just a little bit more, shall we? He, he goes on, and, and I'm going to continue reading here. He says, I don't pray for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their word. You see, the ministry, Jesus is leaving, and he's going to commit it into the hands of his disciples. And they're going to commit it, like he said, Timothy committed into the hands of faithful men, that they may do the work. So Jesus is praying for those who will be saved, who will believe on the Lord Jesus, believe on him through the preaching of the disciples. But he's also praying that those who get saved, it's a continual line all the way till the day when he brings his church home. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible because Jesus Christ, he, he says his heart is embracing all of the redeemed in this prayer from the beginning with Adam and Eve when he slew that skins of the the ram or the lamb for them or the goat all the way to the last person who will believe at the end of the world so he prays not only for his disciples but he's praying for us right now and those who will believe after us you know and, and it's talking about those in heaven and upon earth in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 the writer says, Wherefore seeing, we are also compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience that is set before us. Friends, do you know when somebody dies and goes to heaven, they become as the ministering spirits or the angels in heaven? This is why your guardian angel, and you do have guardian angels, may literally be a relative somebody that's loved you and gone on before you and so we have a great cloud of witnesses the host of heaven all of those that we've known in Christ from from the apostles to Adam and Eve are in heaven cheering us on don't you know Adam knows you're his child Eve knows you're his her, her child Jesus and the father know you're their child so the saints in heaven and the saints on earth are all around. We have a cloud of witnesses watching us as we're walking that narrow path all the way to kingdom's glory. To the day we see our Savior and he says, Welcome home, my child. Thou hast been faithful in much, or thou hast been faithful in little, but thou hast been faithful. Come and receive the rewards given unto you by my Father in his kingdom. What a wonderful day that will be when my Jesus I will see. Amen. Look what he goes on here. I, I want to show you there are seven things 
Now I'm going to take you all the way back to chapter 17 here, verse 11. There are seven things that Jesus prayed specifically for all of his redeemed, those who were saved and those who would be saved. In, in, the first one is in 1711. He says, Father, keep them through thy name who thou hast given me. He is basically giving us unto God the Father and saying, Lord, Father, you preserve them. See, we are kept by the power of God. We're not kept by our own works. You can't. Some people think they are doing such good works. They're living such holy lives. That's why I said, don't let anybody judge you in meat, drink, or in reference to the holy days. It's ridiculous to think that the Jews didn't drink wine. They still drink it to this day. But they're not, it's not the point. We're not living by the law. And that's why it says in Colossians chapter 2, he overcame the rudiments of the world. So don't let people judge you in what you're doing. But let your heart be committed unto God. Take and do all things with thanksgiving. I, I don't drink alcohol because I don't like it. I did. I have in the past. When my heart really hurt, I would drink to try to kill the pain. All it did was made it so I could endure it. But thank God he has given us Jesus Christ. I don't drink alcohol. I haven't touched a drop in a long time. I don't want to, but I'm not going to condemn you for it. Because you're a different person. The Bible tells me, judge no man. Don't judge them and drink meat or how they dress. Friends, we have got to learn to quit nitpicking or caring about the rudiments. Rudiments means the things that people do in life in this world. How do you know somebody's not truly saved? Judge not who shall ascend up, nor who should go beneath. That is to be in the position of Jesus. All we are to do is encourage them, call them alongside. We're to live that Christian walk. <coughs> the first thing he does is he says, Father, <coughs> preserve them. You are kept by the power of God. He has given you eternal life. Sorry about that. I'm having my heart spasms while we're talking. And it may not look like it, but I'm in so much pain, I'm about to cry. I'm not going to. <clears throat> Father, I probably would stop this. So anyway, I get too excited when, when I get excited. Anyway, isn't this exciting? God the Father He's not going to ignore the prayer of Jesus. You cannot lose your salvation because he asked the Father to preserve you. My friend, there's no one greater than the Father. You are in the hand of Jesus and he's in the Father's hands. There's nothing that can move you. Even you can't move you. It's like I got this mean kitty of my daughter's. It was clawing me in the back earlier here. It tore a hole through the chair so it can attack me. Mr. Puddin is, he's one of the meanest, sweetest kitties. He'll love you and then he'll claw you. But if I hold him, he can't get loose. He'll cry, he'll scream, he'll claw me, he'll bite me. <clears throat> but he can't get loose. If I, unless I choose to set him down. I'll set him where I choose to set him down. You see, that's the way it is with the Father. You can sin, you can try to do what you want. You can't get away from God the Father. You can't break away from his power. You can't unsave yourself. And I thank God for that. I'm secure in my Father's hands. Oh, man. So look what else. So the first thing is he asked the Father. He says, Father, keep through thy name. That means your name, Father, depends upon this. Let your name be glorified that you are able to keep them in spite of how sinful they were, in spite of the times they got bitter, in spite of the times they threw tantrums and quit reading your word or got mad or hateful. When my son died, I was bitter. I was a pastor. Nobody was around me. I went down into a secret place with my Bible and I said, Lord, I trusted you. I gave you my family. And you took my son. I mean, I was mad. My heart had been ripped out, ground up, and shoved back down my throat, I felt like. 
I said, why did you take him? And I mean, I heard a sweet, small voice in my head say, because you gave him to me. I'm still ranting. I hear it again. The second time I say, why did you take my son? You gave him to me. And the third time I said it, I'm not kidding. I wasn't on drugs or medication at this time. I didn't have the heart problems. It was like, like right there where I was sitting, though, the air where I was at went and like opened up. And I seen, I kid you not, a green hillside on a precipice. Now that I think about it, it looked like the, the hills of Dover in Ireland. And I seen Jordan running down that hill, but never like I would have pictured him. He was literally wearing like a white Roman outfit. You know, one of those that's cut off at the sleeves and around the waist. And he had a gold band around it. He had gold sandals on. Literally, he looked wonderful. And he run with a bunch of kids that were all around. And he runs down to the preface and he crouched down. I kid you not. He says, Dad, you got to let me go. And I, I looked at him. I was speechless. God, I believe God gave me a view of my son. And it was hard, but I, it was hard to, to do, but I had to let him go. Friends, Jesus has given the Father us. And he says, Father, through thy own name. That means your name rests upon it, Father. I've now asked you to do it. And <clears throat> you know what? God will never not be glorified. He will always do what his name says. <clears throat> sorry about that and so we get into this and look at the the next thing he prays is for our jubilation he said in john 17 13 he says he prays the father that thy that they speaking of all who would be saved and his disciples might have my joy fulfilled in themselves that might have my joy fulfilled in themselves now i use the word jubilation <clears throat> because jubilee it's the last trumpet by the way will be jubilee it's the last of the feast when jubilee happened if you had any debt it was all paid if you had anything taken it was restored <laughs> it was a celebration nobody worked that year nobody planted that year nobody gathered that year Everything, everybody was at peace, could hang out all the time. And you see, that's the way we are in Christ Jesus. Jesus prayed for our joy, that we might have the joy he had with the Father. Do you understand? You have that joy because he's lifted your sins from you. He has set you free so you can be with him. I'm with him, I feel his presence now. Friend, Jesus is here. I was having a cardiac moment this morning. I didn't tell my wife. She doesn't watch my videos so I can talk about her. She likes other pastors. I'm not jealous anymore, but I'm glad they're feeding her. But So I, I laid down <clears throat> and I said, Lord, you know what? I can actually come home right now. I'm ready. And I meant it. But I'm going to keep trying to help people and do what's right until the day the Lord takes me home. But that's the only reason we're here. Friend, do you realize you're not here to get a bigger house or a new car or pay your bills? If your electricity gets shut off, it does. You're here to glorify God. You should not be miserable. He prayed that you would have the joy of the Father in Him. That's great joy. That's exceeding joy. That's joy beyond... Sorry about that. Joy behind our comprehension. All these are on the name of the Father, which means the Father is going to make them come true. Look what he says. It's for our, our complete emancipation from evil. Chapter 17, verse 15. <clears throat> that thou shouldest keep them from evil. And this means self-will. This is one of the true ways of knowing if you're a child of God or not. The effectual fervent prayer of Jesus Christ to the Father is that we would have a complete emancipation from evil. Self-will. The word keep means the Father is holding you 
and he will not let you at it's called his permissive will he will only let you at so much and that's only if it will make you more like Jesus Christ like an apothecary with all these things do you know most of the stuff in an apothecary shop is poisonous yeah, pharmacist and it'll kill you but if you have an ailment and they mix you the right stuff and you take it it'll cure you so God will let you have it's his permissive will he'll let you have way to do certain things but only if it makes you more like Jesus Christ there's a reason behind it <coughs> look what he says keep them that thou should keep them from evil he prayed next for our sanctification. We did a whole message on that, John 17, 17. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Set aside, make them holy, and consecrate them to your work. He prayed for our unification. Let me not, I'll back, back up. See, friends, he's committed us unto the Father so we can do the work of Christ. You don't need to be on a bench. Whatever your gift is, is that's what you use. <clears throat> a pastor breaks down the word of God because he's been made the poime on didiasco, the pastor who is the teacher of the word. That's what that means. Poime is the word shepherd or pastor. On didiasco means who is the teacher. But we have people with the gift of helps, the gift of mercy, the gift of giving. <clears throat> friends whatever your gift is is that's how you serve God but you always talk about how great your Savior is how great your Lord is that's our job he's prayed it for us look what he says next he prayed for our unification in verse 21 that they may all be one <clears throat> he wants us that they may all be one as thou father art in me I in thee they may also be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me do you know how the world knows Jesus was real and it, he was sent by God the father by your life you are a written epistle what do I mean he's joined to the father and the Holy Spirit the Trinity father son Holy Spirit Sorry, I got acid shoots up and burns my throat from my heart. He's given you his Holy Spirit, putting you in him and him in you. And he's given you his holy word. And he's given you the authority to take and do what he has commissioned you to do, to spread the gospel, speak the truth, to bless every heart, mind, soul, and spirit that will come to him. Amen. You have a unity with the Father that nothing can separate you from the minute. When it says love, it means the way God ministers to you in Christ Jesus because you're in him. Friends, you have been joined to the Trinity, the Holy God. Doesn't that change your mind about the way you want to live? You have been made a holy priest, an ambassador, a child that can walk the streets and hold your head up because you serve the highest king. And I tell you what, the world will hate you. It will go against you. And that's why he covered that in his prayer. Let's go on a little bit farther here. He prayed for our association with himself in verse 24. This is personalized. This is you and me personally with him. That they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Now you might not understand what that means. It doesn't just mean we're caught up into the third heaven on our departure from this earth. But actually it means you're always with him. You're in the presence of God. He is never going to leave you. He will never forsake you. Everything you think, say, do, every thought that passes through your head, everything that happens to you, he's there. He's with you. He prayed the Father for that to happen. And the Father answered his prayer because it was the will of the Father. Amen. Doesn't that help you? Doesn't that magnify his grace in your life? Lastly, he prayed for our gratification in verse 24. 
that we may behold his glory. And this is the glory which God the Father gave him before the foundation of the earth. Now what does this mean? God the Father commissioned Jesus to create the universe and everything else and everything that's in it. And he did it and he glorified the Father. He carried out his will. It was the obedient spirit. So what is he praying? That we would have obedient spirits to glorify the Father through our lives. That's what that means. <coughs> So, God the Father has answered the prayer of the Son. Your life will glorify Him. Do you know it's never too late to turn your life around? It's never too late to give yourself completely over to the Lord. Today's a good day to say, Lord, <laughs> I make mistakes all the time, not just my past. And I'm going to keep making mistakes because I'm in a body that is filled with sin. And I hate this body. This flesh is your enemy and that makes it my enemy. <clears throat> this world filled with bad people. But you are good and you will preserve me. Let's get into this. He says, I in them and thou in me, we're all in each other, that thou be me made perfect in one. <clears throat> this means we have been made one in Christ Jesus. We are unified. And the Bible tells us that we, the church, are his body, and he is our head. He, he's the one that gives us our thoughts, our mind. I and them, thou and me, that we may be made perfect in one. Word perfect means complete. Okay? <clears throat> and that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. Do you see that? He says God the Father loves us just as much as he does Jesus. Friend, that's a deep love that can't be surpassed. But he sent Jesus into this world to be a sacrifice on our behalf. And we should be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice unto him. We should set aside the things of this world. And live for the things of Christ. That's what God wants. And that's what he's going to do in your life. Let's go on. <clears throat> he says, Father, I will that thou also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. We are in his presence. He's always with us. Verse 25, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And this, is, this is talking about an intimate, in, the deepest of intimacy. And these, speaking of his disciples and those who would be saved, have known that thou sent me. Why? Because you cannot come to salvation and not know that Jesus is real. When he comes into your heart, he's the most real thing in your life says verse 26 I have declared thy name unto them I have declared unto them thy name and I will declare it <clears throat> what does that mean it means he's going to declare the name of the father through us his disciples that the love that means the agape the ministry wherein thou has ministered unto me may be in them and I in them do you know what he's saying <clears throat> as the Father ministered to Jesus Christ, He's now ministering to us. There may be times when you're in the wilderness, when you're fasting, when you're starved. There may be times when they want to kill you. He prayed for our preservation because we are surrounded by bitter people, hateful. They don't like the gospel. But He said, Preservest thou them. Friends, what more can I say? Jesus culminates this teaching and his prayer for his church. 
you are safe in the arms of Jesus. You are under the Father's direct attention. He loves you. He wants you. He is with you. Praise God. Surrender your life today. <clears throat> Give your life to Jesus Christ. Father, I pray and ask that you bless this word. And I praise you for your prayers, Jesus. I praise you, Father, for sending the Son and bringing us to you on his behalf. Thank you, Father, for loving me and all these that are thine. Separate us from the world and worldly things. Preserve us. Protect us from those that would hate us. Empower us. Lord, you give us the gifts. Stir them up within us and make them burn even brighter. And we will give you the praise. In Christ Jesus' holy and precious name I pray. Amen. All right, Lord bless you, my friends. I'll see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. And we will start chapter 18. In Christ's love, till tomorrow.